Keith Green said, the Roman Catholic Church is not a cult, it's an empire. That's the message I have for you today, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the late Keith Green, now he was a, uh, a musician, a Christian uh, musician, uh, very well known. Uh, late 70s, early 80s, he died in a uh, plane crash in 1982, but was powerfully used of God. He preached the word of God through his uh, music, and uh, he wrote uh, tracks also, uh, Last Day's Ministry, which still continues uh, to this day. Uh, in fact, the, the, uh, a set of tracks that were uh, printed by this ministry, uh, they were called the Catholic Chronicles, powerful a uh, set of tracks, four separate tracks. In fact, I have videos up on this website. You can look at them where I review each one of those tracks. Uh, those Bible tracks, they're not available anymore. They were pulled after Keith was killed. Uh, you have to wonder because they, they made so many other tracks. Um, and as far as I know, none of the other tracks were pulled, but these were. And, uh, you know, folks, if you know anything about uh, the Roman Catholic Church, uh, things like this should not surprise you. Once again, I speak as a former Roman Catholic. So, uh, Keith, in one of those tracks, this is the statement uh, that he made, that the Roman Catholic Church is not a cult, it's an empire. Now, I did a, a video regarding the seven false teachings of the Roman Catholic cult, so there's no question about it that it is a cult, but Keith takes it further, and he calls it an empire. And you know something? He's He's absolutely... Uh, right. It, it, it is an empire. The Roman Catholic Church, ladies and gentlemen, uh, y you need to get it into your head, into your system. It is not a true Christian church. It is an empire, just like uh, Mr. Keith Green said. So we're living in a day of apostasy. We're living in a day of falling away, where people are joining hands with this counterfeit uh, church, uh, that is calling itself the only true church in the world, by the way. But here, uh, uh, Mr. Green, Keith Green, refers to it as an empire. So uh, he had the uh, spiritual fortitude, ladies and gentlemen, to speak up and, and write against this system known as the Roman Catholic Church. So uh, it is absolutely amazing in the modern day in which we are living where people are joining hands, working hand in hand with the system of Roman Catholicism. Let me give you some um, quotes now uh, from that uh, Catholic Chronicles uh, set of tracks. This is from Keith Green. It is obvious by even this brief glimpse into the doctrines of mortal and venial sins, confession, penance, and purgatory, that the Roman Catholic Church has constructed one of the most unbiblical doctrinal systems that has ever been considered Christian. The fear, anguish, and religious bondage that such a system of reward and punishment creates has tormented millions of lives for centuries and continues to prey on those who are ignorant of the biblical way of salvation. To merely call such a system a cult would be to throw it into the vast category of religions and quasi-religions that are currently making the rounds of our college campuses and city streets, snatching up many an unsuspecting youth. No, the Roman church is not a cult, it's an empire. And that was from those Catholic Chronicles, and that was written by Keith Green. Keep in mind, as I said, he uh, died in... Um, 1982, uh, a plane went down, I believe it was on the uh, property, the grounds of the last day's ministry in Texas. Um, he was killed along with, uh, I believe, two of his children. There was another missionary uh, family that was with him, and they were also killed in that crash uh, of that plane. Heartbreaking. Uh, I was not a Christian at the time, but I might have vaguely uh, remembered hearing something on the radio, but, uh, you know, being I wasn't a Christian, I probably wasn't really paying too much attention uh, to it uh, during that time. So Keith makes some powerful uh, statements uh, regarding uh, the Roman Catholic Church. He's talking about fear, anguish. He's saying uh, religious bondage, okay? 
And, and he says to, they, they tormented millions of lives for centuries. He's, he's, he's spot on with that, of course. You know, as a, as a former Roman Catholic, the torment. I mean, uh, he, Keith talks about mortal and venial sins. If, you, if you're not a Catholic, you probably don't know about these things, but there would be mortal sins, uh, such as missing Mass on Sunday, venial sins, less, lesser sins. And, and I remember being tormented as a young man, saying, who can remember all these things? man I, I i was i was shot man i figured i was gone you know that's why i always say you know even purgatory was a long shot for me it, it, it's a system of bondage it's a system of torment and yet we have uh, churches even big name churches work hand in hand they're calling for unity of all believers they don't know the word of god they're not listening to the word of god ladies and gentlemen i don't care how famous they are you know, they reach a point, I think, where they where they become famous, they get to uh, go on their little Christian television shows and so on and so forth, and the money starts pouring in. They make a name for themselves. They start writing books, and, and, and they start ignoring the Word of God. And that's exactly what is happening uh, throughout the land. It's been going on for decades, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, you know, I appreciate these... Uh, these tracks, you know, I happen to have a copy uh, of, of all of those tracks. I, I was able to get it, uh, actually, I get it on eBay. You can't find them anymore, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but, you know, uh, w w what Keith says, obviously, he's calling it an empire. Uh, that That's a big statement to make. It's, it's an empire. It has nothing to do with biblical Christianity. So he gives you a brief glimpse uh, into that in his uh, uh, tracks. Um, and he calls it one of the most unbiblical doctrinal system that has ever been considered Christian. So uh, you got to ask yourself, where, where are the voices of the anointed men and women of God uh, who, who would speak out today, folks? You know, the Roman Catholic charismatic uh, movement. That was another tool uh, used by the devil. Uh, he's a crafty uh, snake is what he is, folks. The way he, he moves. And uh, as a former Roman Catholic, I became involved in that Catholic charismatic uh, movement for uh, a few years. And people have no idea that uh, it's, it's still Roman Catholic to the very core. You know, they, they, they still pray the Hail Marys. In fact, my Hail Marys, my prayers to Mary increased during that time uh, uh, as a charismatic uh, Roman Catholic. You, you, you're still going to Mass, ladies and gentlemen. There's still the idolatry. There's still the paganism. There's still the... Uh, the missing commandment, as if I could say that, the second commandment, it's still Roman Catholic. They're still under the leadership of the Pope. They still go to Mass where they call the priest father. Uh, they still believe all the false doctrines of, of the Roman uh, Catholic Church, including the sacrifice of the Mass, uh, which they say satisfies the justice of God for sins committed against him. That's heresy. That alone makes it a false uh, gospel. So uh, you, you got to be aware of these things, ladies and gentlemen. So let me give you another uh, uh, portion from uh, one of those uh, Catholic Chronicle tracks by Keith Green. He says, I know that many will not be convinced or moved by this article or any of the others to make such a conclusion, they are impressed by what they've heard about recent stirrings among the Catholics in the charismatic renewal. Many evangelicals, especially charismatics, have been thrilled by the reports of Catholics speaking in tongues, dancing in the spirit, having nights of joy and praise, even attending charismatic masses. Mouths that used to speak out boldly against the Church of Rome have been quieted by the times. It no longer is in vogue to speak of the Pope as the Antichrist or the Catholic Church as the whore of Babylon. Now Protestants unwittingly believe that our differences are not so great. Ah, that is just what she needs us to think. So uh, once again, that was from the Catholic Chronicles by Mr. Uh, Keith Green. So, you know, what, he, he's pressing a point here regarding the Catholic charismatics. He says, many people, uh, they're impressed by this. You know, oh, the Catholics, oh, we're, we're, all, we're all one or the spirit is moving. Look at this. But it's still Roman Catholic, folks. Hear me now. You know, I, I remember um, 
during the 90s, you know, uh, I was hanging out a lot in um, Manhattan, New York City, because that's where I was going to church at the time. And, uh, you know, we did a lot of witnessing to our, uh, our family and stuff. You know, Kathy's side of the family, they're Italian. So I uh, we went up to the uh, American Bible Society because I, I knew they, they uh, printed Bibles in different languages. And one of the times when we went up there, I, I remember there was a big picture. I think it was Pope John uh, Paul II uh, in the... Um, in the window. So I said, I said, look at this. Look at this. You want to talk about compromise, folks? Bible societies, I mean, they used to represent truth, you know. But now, uh, for decades, uh, things like the American Bible Society, society they've been infiltrated by that ecumenical spirit. Oh, yes, they have. I mean, here's the Pope in the window of the American Bible Society. We were looking for an Italian Bible, which we got, you know, which we passed on to one of Kathy's relatives. Um, so we were happy to find that. But what I'm talking about today, folks, is compromise with a capital C. In fact, I, I saw another thing uh, recently, you know, as I was doing some research on these things, uh, it, it was a military Bible that was printed by the American Bible Society, and, and it also had a thing on how to pray to Mary and all of this stuff. Right inside, right inside the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, this is what we're dealing with, ladies and gentlemen. And you will have people who call themselves men of God. They will not budge from that. Uh, we're all one. we got to stick together. We're one. Yeah, you will be one with the devil. You know, one of the lines that the popes often use is, is dialogue. Keep in mind that they believe that they are the only true church, ladies and gentlemen. Keep in mind that they murdered people by the millions and that the doctrines of today are the same doctrines that were back then in the time when they murdered millions, folks. And yet you have people falling down before these people, joining hands with them, and the Pope can come into town, they will say nothing. They will say nothing. This is where we are today. We are living in a day of great apostasy. So uh, I tip my hat to Brother Keith Green for, uh, for standing up for the truth. You know, I came through, as I said, the charismatic movement, my merry worship, as I said, it increased, uh, was into that Medjugorje, uh, that whole thing, the, the apparitions, which still continue to this day. But... Um, I thank God that the Lord set me free. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. it says, And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That's a scripture that a, a Christian woman gave to Kathy, you know, when she realized we were into this Medjugorje stuff. And, and God used it. And Kathy got the light. She dug into the word of God. Uh, and, and she started studying the the, the, uh, the message of Medjugorje, uh, all those messages that were coming forth, and, and now comparing it side by side with the scriptures. And she said, "Whoa, oh this can't be true. You know, if, if, if Mother Mary, the fake Mother Mary, it's actually a demon spirit, is saying this, and the Bible says this, they both can't be true. And, 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 and the Lord opened up her eyes. She said it was like uh, the Holy Ghost took a yellow highlighter pen, and then she began to... Uh, share these things with me and I resisted you know uh, out of pride for, for several weeks and then, then she, something just hit me and said listen and thank God the Lord opened up my eyes I was born again of the spirit ladies and gentlemen that's why I'm preaching to you today the way I am keep in mind that the Roman Catholic Church teaches that you're born again when you're baptized as a little infant that's a lie from the pit of hell I know, I was baptized as an infant, folks. I was not born again until I was 36 years old. Glory to God. It's a big thing, folks, when you're born again. You will never be the same. Hear that. Hear that again. You will never be the same. How could you ever be the same if you've been regenerated by the power of the Holy Spirit? And the Spirit of God will take the Word of God. That, that Word of God will open up to you. And that's what happened to me. And I have not been silent ever since that time. And, and you know, when you start going to church and you look around and you say, you must be kidding me. You see the compromise that takes place and, 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 and that glazed look that, that, that comes in the eyes of people, including pastors, when you try to uh, tell them these things. They, they really don't want to hear it. It's, it's almost as if it's too much for them, folks. So um, 
So I knew without a doubt these things with Medjugorje's uh, uh, appearances of what they think is Mother Mary is not Mother Mary at all. It's a devil, folks. It's demon spirits. And I will say that for all of the rest uh, of the appearances, uh, alleged appearances of Mary, including Fatima, Lourdes, and Guadalupe. And that's the reason I speak and write the way that I do, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, how, how can I remain silent? You know, and, um, uh, you know, people say they love the Lord, and uh, yet they will not warn others, even, even former Roman Catholics. They, they know what I'm saying is true, but they hold it in. Don't hold it in anymore, folks. The hour is very late, you see. Uh, you know, I tell people there is no such place as purgatory. No need for the sacrifice of the Mass. Jesus paid the price in full. Yes, he did. Listen to this quote from uh, Leonard Ravenhill. He actually um, ministered to Keith Green. You know, they were, the ministries were uh, fairly close to each other in Texas, and he was able to uh, mentor uh, Keith Green for a season. So that's, I'm, I'm guessing that's how Keith Green uh, learned a lot of his stuff. Listen to what uh, Mr. Leonard Ravenhill says regarding uh, the Roman Catholic Church. He said, these priests who dope men's souls, these idolatrous masses, these Calvary eclipsing prayers to Mary, these miserable millions cheated in life and in death by the greatest forgery Lucifer ever made. What? Think about that, folks. Here's Leonard Ravenhill calling the Roman Catholic Church the greatest forgery Lucifer ever made made. And yet people, even people who know him, this, uh, knew him, he's, he's not alive anymore, uh, even people who worked with him will still work with Roman with the Roman Catholic Church, e even if they listen uh, to something like that. I mean, you must be kidding me, folks. The greatest forgery Lucifer ever made. And that was from Why Revival Tarries by Leonard Ravenhill, Bethany House publish Publishes, 1988. Copyright 1959, the book's been around for quite a while. So, you know, considering the false doctrines of Rome that they haven't changed, then you, you got to say, why is the church remaining silent for so long? That's something you have to ask yourself. Now, you've heard me speak about Billy Graham before, you know, how he removed the, uh, the warnings about the, the Church of Rome from Halley's Bible handbook. I mean, uh, think about it. All, all the church history regarding the wickedness of Rome and the wickedness of their popes. Uh, what happened to the, the, the Billy Graham uh, ministry, they, they bought the rights to that book and they removed, my oh my, all the warnings that were in the back of the book for his crusade edition. So here he is preaching the word of God, handing out these handbooks, but all those warnings that people should know about, they're, they're not there anymore. And I can tell you, folks, they use Roman Catholics as altar workers at the, uh, at the Crusades when he did his Crusades. So, you know, that, doesn't that make sense? Why would you want those warnings there if you're using Catholics as, as altar workers? So, folks, as I said, we're living in a day of incredible compromise. Uh, something else from Keith Green. Listen to what he says. I've never completely understood why God led me to write these articles. But it becomes more clear with each day of study and each page of research, never has something so black and wicked gotten away with appearing so holy and mysteriously beautiful for so long. Keith Green from the Catholic Chronicle. So think about that. He's calling it wicked, folks. And he says it appears so holy and mysteriously beautiful. And he says, I don't know why God led me to write these articles. I know why God led him to write the articles, so that people would have their eyes opened up, so that people might come out of that wicked system, so that people like myself might get saved. You hold back the truth, folks. Hear me now, you're doing the devil's work. You're doing Satan's work. If, you, if, you, if you're squashing and smothering the truth to advance your own ministry, you, you, don't, you don't want to be persecuted because, you, you know, when you say these things, uh, people are going to be offended. So, so, so what you end up doing is you, you compromise with the Church of Rome. 
Oh, that's exactly what you're doing. And that's exactly why the Apostle Paul wrote this in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils or doctrines of demons. And that's the way the devil works, uh, ladies and gentlemen, seducing spirits. They seduce you into believing false teaching. They seduce you into joining hands with systems such as Roman Catholicism. So we're living in a day when nobody even bats an eye anymore and say we're all one. We're all swinging together. And, and the Pope is saying uh, we need to dialogue. Let me, uh, let me say something to you, ladies and gentlemen. The Pope, especially the present Jesuit Pope by the name of Pope Francis, Francis, that man will dialogue you right into hell. You can't take a false gospel, ladies and gentlemen, which they preach, and join hands with the true gospel, with true Christians, and get away with it, folks. It, 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 it doesn't work. It's, it's a false gospel. It's a counterfeit gospel. This, this teaching of purgatory, uh, praying for the dead people, uh, offering up masses uh, so that your relatives can get out of this place called purgatory that does not even exist. The prayers to Mary, the apparitions of Mary all over the world, nothing more than demon spirits. And you've been warned many times, even uh, by the videos I'm doing, ladies and gentlemen, I'm warning you once again, do not fall for it. Do not be deceived by this leader, uh, so-called leader, that sits on his throne in the Vatican in Rome. He preaches a counterfeit gospel. And, and, and if you continue to work hand in hand with them, or you attend a church where, where, you, where your pastor says, we all got to work together, even the Roman Catholics, we got to work with them. Folks, it's your choice. You can remain there and be seduced, or you can leave. Be blessed.